Perfect. Okay, so now we are recording and I'm going to I'm going to get started. So welcome everyone to the first National Geographic Learning Asia webinar of 2022. Uh, this is the start of our spring season of webinars. So happy new year, happy lunar new year and welcome back if you if you've been to one of our webinars before and if you haven't welcome and it's great to see you for the first time. Uh, today we're doing a model lesson about mediation and about being a good listener and I'm curious to see did any of you attend the webinar two days ago with Chia Swan Chong? Did any of you attend that a couple of days ago? Just curious. Yes, Emiko did. Great. Okay, well, good to see you back. Okay, lots of no's there. Okay, good. Some of you did and some of you didn't. That's fine, isn't it? Okay, so um, I'm going to be, um, if you, whether you did or you didn't, okay, today's webinar is going to be more of a, um, a model lesson. Okay, so we're going to be giving you a bit more of an experience of how National Geographic Learning present mediation in a lesson okay and it was great wasn't it it was really good Negi. it was a, per, a really great webinar okay so uh, let me introduce myself my name is will lashett and i am an academic consultant and teacher trainer for national geographic learning um, i'm from the uk but i now live in singapore and i've been working in english language teaching since 2001 um, and I'd like to know a little bit about who we have here today. So I'm going to launch my first poll. And I'd just like you to tell me, please, by, by choosing as many options that are true for you. Uh, who do you teach? Um, or maybe you're not a teacher. In that case, you can click I'm not a teacher, which is fine. But you can click as many segments as are true for you. So if you teach teens, university and adults, just choose those three. And I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Give you a little bit of time to, to answer there. So the materials we're looking at today from Voices that you can see at the top right of your screen um, is a program designed for young adults and adults. OK, so it would be relevant for teenagers, for university and for adults. And I can see the majority of you are actually teaching uh, or that, yeah, the biggest segment we've got are actually teens. OK, let's share. OK, that's 70 percent of you have voted. So let's share. So we can see here that the largest number of you, 43 percent, are teaching teens. OK, a lot of you, a third are teaching university, about 20 percent adults, quite a lot of you teaching young learners as well. So the topic, the themes we're talking about. Uh, could be applied, some of the activities can be applied to young learners, but the lesson we're doing is really aimed at teenagers, university or adults. Okay, thank you for letting me know who we've got here today. It's good to know your audience. That is something very important in mediation. Know who you are talking to. Okay, so yeah, here's the name of the program, Voices. And as you can see, it's uh, a seven level program from A1 to C1 level, CEFR. It's an integrated skills force skill program. At the moment, it's only available in British English because it is brand new, but we are developing the American English version right now. And I'm really excited. I think this is a fantastic program. So let's start off at the same place that Chia started off, for those of you who attended her webinar what is mediate, mediation? So it's a very big thing in education now. Um, you can type into the chat box for me, what, what does mediation mean to you? Any words or phrases that you would use to describe mediation? So please share in the chat box. What does it mean to you? Okay, Frederick says facilitation. Great, that's a great answer, Frederick. Uh, Diana says communicating. Yes, this is obviously very important. Negotiation, facilitating communication, putting those two ideas together. Rapport, alleviating tension. That's very interesting, Matty. Integration, communication, intervention, a way to concentrate. Okay, be careful, not meditation. Okay, mediation. Something that facilitates communication. Negin, or Negin, I'm not sure I'd say your name. An interactive process, right? Some great ideas coming out here. Lots of 
related vocabulary, okay, peace building, okay, lots of different concepts coming out. So I'm going to show you one definition. There are lots of ways to define this. And uh, this is actually the explanation from the back of the Voices teacher's book. And let's read it. It says mediation occurs when we use language to explain something. And we're explaining that something to someone who doesn't fully understand it without our help. So this something, it could be a text, it could be an idea, a concept, or it could be a person, okay? And as Chia said the other day, we can think of mediation like a bridge, okay? So it's like a bridge to understanding or a bridge between you and someone else to help them understand something, okay? Um, so there are, this is a kind of general uh, a general definition. Um, we also talk about three other kinds of mediation, okay, in voices, and these are, first one is mediating a text, and this is helping someone understand some written information. So, for example, if you're teaching, um, if you're teaching a grammar point, like a grammar explanation, maybe your students read that in the textbook, they read the examples, they read the rules, and then maybe they ask you, to explain it because they don't understand. So when you explain this grammar point in your own words, what you're doing there is you are mediating that text, okay? You're helping them to understand it. That's mediating a text. Next, we have mediating concepts, which basically means sharing well, concepts or ideas with other people. So if I ask you what you think about something and you explain it to me, we are mediating that concept, okay? If I explain my idea in more detail to you, I'm mediating that concept to you. And the third one is mediating communication. So this means between two people. And when we think of a mediator, someone's role or someone's job, um, this is really what we're talking about, mediating communication, where one person is helping two other people to understand each other. So they're in the middle, they're the go between, between two people or two groups of people. This is mediating communication. So I help, hope those explanations help you understand a little bit. There are actually much fuller explanations of these found in the Voices uh, mediation section of the teacher's book. So this lesson is about active listening. So I have a question for you. What do you think? Is active listening a mediation skill? Why or why not? So I'd like you to type into the chat box for me. So I just explained a little bit about what mediation is. So what do you think? Listening, active listening, is this a mediation skill? Yes or no? Goma says no. So we've got lots of yeses coming in as well. And if you could, if you can say why, that would be great as well. I had a big Olat says, absolutely, capital letters. So I think that's a definite yes. Okay, almost everyone is saying yes, but nobody's telling me why. <laughs> Just had one no. Okay, lots and lots of yeses. Oh, here we go. Yes, because to be able to understand and explain, you have to listen. Abigail, that is great. Olat, there cannot be mediation without active listening. I agree. Listening open up, opens up communication. Right, lots of good answers here. Um, Negan says, yes, because we can communicate this way. We, we can't communicate this way without active listening. Uh, Amelia says, yes, so you can be sure to understand what the other person is saying. Right, so lots of you have got the same ideas here. So I can show you that according to the CEFR, um, active listening is, is definitely a mediation skill. So here, this is actually from... Uh, a descriptor from the A2 level of the CEFR, and it says that students at this level can use simple words to ask someone to explain something. So asking someone to explain, this is a type of active listening, isn't it? Okay, so when we're listening, we don't understand. To be active, we ask them to explain it. That's active listening, and the CEFR tells us that that is also mediation. Uh, what you're looking at here is an index of the activities found in Voices. There are 12 of these uh, communicative activities. They're photocopyable, um, and you can use these uh, one per unit 
to practice the mediation skills that the students are learning. They're really great activities. We're going to do this one later on. Can you explain? Okay, so today's lesson we're doing, it's a D lesson in voices and all of the D lessons, they're lively video lessons that illustrate communicative scenarios and they provide insight into different communication skills. Um, they're also where you will find a lot of the mediation activities and language. And here you're looking at the lesson goals for lesson 2D in the elementary level. And this is from the teacher's book. So in the lesson goals here, it tells us that the lesson is an integrated skills lesson, listening and speaking. We can see that the aim is to give students uh, tips on how to become an active listener and also give them opportunities to practice it. They're going to learn language to ask for clarification and show interest. And then they're going to do a role play task where they put all of this together to use that language. So it's really important as teachers that the teacher understands what what we're doing, what the students are doing. Um, I'm going to be using the classroom presentation tool today uh, to, to teach this lesson. And basically we call it the CPT. And the CPT is um, a digital resource. It's a multimedia resource. It has all of the student book, all of the workbook content. It has interactive activities. It has games. It has all the answer keys in there. You can use it online. You can use it offline. And it's really a fantastic resource for teachers. It makes teaching so easy, whether you're um, in the classroom or online like we are now. Uh, so this is what it looks like. OK, so let's go over and start the lesson. So I'm just going to stop sharing just for a moment. And I'm going to do a new share. Let's see if I can get the right one. Let's do a screen share. And we're going to go into the CPT. So this is what we're looking at now. We can see all the different units here, 12 units and the games that I mentioned. And we're going to have a look at unit two. Uh, we can use student book or workbook. So let's go into the student's book. Then I do that. All of the lessons appear here. We're going to do that D lesson. So let's click on there. And it just takes a couple of seconds to load. Um, I mentioned the lesson goals for teachers, but I want to point out here that the lesson goals are also shown in the student book. And I think this is really important that the students know what they're learning okay because if they don't know what they're doing okay it's difficult for them to understand why they're doing it so really nice that we've got the lesson goals here um, i'm always surprised when uh, i observe teachers um, and they don't they don't put the goals up they don't tell students what they're going to be learning i think that's really important um, so let's start off by looking at this image okay this is a national geographic learning programs so we've got lots of lovely interesting images um, and I want you to tell me in the chat box, I want you to tell me about this. So what are we looking at here? Who, who are these men? OK, what are they doing? How do they know each other? So type that into the chat box for me, please. Who are these men? What are they doing? How do they know each other? Liev says they're neighbours having a chat. Right, great answer. Frederick says they're farmers. Maria says neighbours. They're conversing. Yes, they are, Lenita. They're pals, right? They're friends. Talking together. OK, right. So they're having a chat, right? Um, what are they talking about? What do you think? The two friends communicating. Perhaps they're shepherds. OK, they're talking about the farm, talking about the animals. Great. Daily life. OK, so they're just sitting there. OK, they know each other having a nice conversation, right? Right, let me ask you another question. In this, there are two people here and a goat. Who, which man is the one that's talking? Is it the man on the left or is it the man on the right? Which one is talking? The one on the right, how do you know? Lenita says left, everyone else says right. Why is the man on the right? You can see his mouth, okay, his mouth is open. What else is he doing? Right, body language. So it looks like he's using his hand to make a point. He's gesticulating, isn't he? He's making a point with his hand, right? Great, so he's talking. So the man on the left is listening. Do you think this man on the left, do you think he is a good listener? Yes, and why? How do you know he's a good listener? He seems focused, right? He does, doesn't he? 
He looks amused. Yeah, he does. So it looks like he's he's showing that he's interested. He looks amused. He has rapport. The expression on his face, Maria says, the expression is of one who is listening. He's responding, his body language, right? So he is looking him, he's looking at him in the eye. He's turned his head. He has open body language. He's showing a kind of friendly, pleasant facial expression. You can see he's focused. So we can say that he is a good listener. Just Lenita just says, no, he's not listening. Okay, well, okay, everyone else thinks he is. Okay, Lenita says he's not, maybe he isn't. Um, okay, so lots of ideas why he is a good listener. Okay, so let's have a look down here. Now, I want you to think about someone that you know. So think about someone that you know very well who is a good listener, okay, and think about what makes them a good listener, okay? And maybe you can type a few more ideas into the chat box. Think of someone you know who is very good at listening. Uh, Giselle says, my mother. Um, what makes her good at listening to people so she listens intently so it could be anyone it could be someone in your family a friend it could be anyone they ask good questions amelia very interesting they ask good questions giselle says you can feel her heart right so she is um she speaks from the heart right she's genuine that's great so what other things make someone a good listener Abigail, my mother, because she remembers everything I say, right, and remembering things means that they definitely listening, right? Because um, if you don't listen, you can't remember, yes? Okay, very nice. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at the next question, question number two. It says, why is it important to listen? So can you type into the chat box for me now? Why should we listen to people when they speak? Why is that important? to facilitate understanding, to really connect. Right, I like that idea of connecting to people, to show importance to the one speaking. Right, so it's respectful, isn't it? We're showing, we're showing them when we listen, you are important, right? I respect you. Uh, Giselle says, listening is imperative because it is at the heart of genuine communication. Right, if you're not listening, there's no communication, right? You might, the other person might as well be talking to the wall. Uh, we, it's important to get information, to understand. It motivates the speaker. Thank you, Juralyn. It gives respect, right? Exactly. Fire tablet. Uh, to be able to respond. Right. Interesting. So we listen so that we can respond accurately. <clears throat> Great. So lots of good. Uh, Mabube says it's about the relationship, connecting in a relationship. <clears throat> Great. So loads of good answers here. Um, someone also said, I will learn from the speaker. Right. That's a great point as well. OK, so we're going to listen now to a conversation. It's a, a listening activity between Josh and his father, Evan. All right. So before we listen to this, um, before we listen to uh, the, the audio, <clears throat> I want to have a look at the sentences here. So the activity is actually to it's a true or false activity but i want to use it as a prediction exercise so let's read these together number one it says this is the first time that josh josh is the the son this is the first time josh is thinking about what he wants to study after we listen you're going to tell me true or false number two evan thinks studying drama is a good idea remember evan is the father Number three, Evan thinks studying maths and business is a good idea. And number four, Josh wants to study drama. OK, Josh is the son. <clears throat> OK, so let's have a quick prediction here. What is this conversation about? OK, what is are this father and son? What are they talking about? What's the topic of conversation? Diana, straight in there, choosing a major, right, for who? Choosing a major for who? Great, Matty, what Josh will study at college. Great, college degree. So how old do you think Josh is? Talking about what profession, maybe he's about 18, right. So he's probably a teenager, 17, 18. Yeah, 
<clears throat> so he's probably around that age, right? So another question for you, this kind of, in your culture, in your country where you live, is this kind of conversation, is it common between parents and teenagers? Is this type of conversation common? So he says, yes, great. Okay, everyone's saying yes, right? And another question for you, um, in this kind of conversation, who do you expect to be doing most of the talking? Who do we expect to be talking more in this conversation? The par Abigail says the parent. Fire Tablet says parents. Negin says Josh. Frederick says the child. Marites says the father. Okay, so we've got a mix, but I think most of you are saying, someone says both, Leaves says both. Most of you, I think, are saying the parent. Oh, it's quite even, actually, quite even. Um, who do you expect to be doing listening? Who do you think is going to be listening? The child, okay, the son, right. Should be the father, the parent, neither. Amelia <laughs> says neither. No, they're not going to listen to each other. Okay, so we've got an even mix here. Okay, so we're going to listen. Okay, listen to this. Let's click in here so we can see the activity. Um, so we've got the questions here. We can we can answer these later. So let's listen to this, okay? <clears throat> and I want you to think about the questions we looked at. You can see them there. Are they true or false? And also just, just listen and think about how the conversation goes. Dad, I need to talk to you about my university plans. You decided what you want to study? Well, I'm not sure, but... You had a year to think about this. It's time for you to make a decision now. You cannot be unsure about this. Yes, I know. But there are many things I would like to learn. Yes, there are so many things, but you need to focus, son. You need to focus if you want to succeed in life. Yeah, you see, I like drama and acting, but Drama? I... What do you want to study drama for? Oh, you need to think carefully about this. I know, that's why... Do you know they say only 3% of people who go to acting school have acting jobs? No, you see, I want to study maths. Maths is useful for business. Maths and business together is a good idea. I was thinking a lot about this. I think I can do maths and history in our local city college. They also have a very good drama club. Their drama club won maths many... Maths and history? Oh, that's no good. Dad, your opinion is very important to me. But I'm trying to ask you about... I'm happy that you think my opinion is important. <laughs> I've lived life for a lot longer than you. I understand, Dad. So, what do you want to ask me? It's OK. Forget about it. OK, so I think Olat's kind of summed that up for us there. The father is a bit of a nightmare, isn't he? Um, so the father is doing most of the talking there, OK? As a lot of you said, you would expect. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, let's have a look at the questions first, right? So first one, this is the first time Josh is thinking about what he wants to study. So what do we think? Is that true or false? I think it's the first time, or do you think he's thought about this before? Yeah, it's definitely false. He's obviously thought about this a lot. Uh, Evan, the father, he thinks that studying drama is a good idea. True or false? Yeah, he definitely thinks that's a bad idea, doesn't he? Number three, Evan thinks that studying maths and business is a good idea. What do we think? True. And the last one, Josh wants to study drama. He wants to study drama. Okay, most of you putting true. Gliddell says false. Most of you putting true. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to click on the answer here to see. Amelia says false. So the answer is actually false. So he, he does mention drama. He talks about drama, but he, yeah, he, he wants to study uh, maths 
and he wants to study history. He wants to go to a, Maria's got it, he wants to go to a college that has a drama club. So he wants to do that as extracurricular activity because he likes it, but he wants to study maths and history. It's his father that wants him to study business, right? Okay, so we've got the answers there. Okay, we can check them. These are the correct answers. Okay, well done. Um, let's go back to Evan then and talk a little bit about this. So Olat said that, his father is a bit of a nightmare. Um, before we talk about that, let me ask you something else. What was the advice that his father, Evan, gave him? So there, I think there were like three bits of advice. The first bit was make a something. He says to him, make a, a focus. Yes, he does say focus. That's the second bit. OK, before he said focus. Yes, make a decision. He says you have to make a decision. Be decisive. He then says, you need to focus on what you want because that's how you succeed by focusing. And the other bit of advice was about the subjects he should study. And he says that you should study maths and you should study, uh, what was the other one? The other one was business, right? Maths and business. So three bits of advice, focus, make a decision, maths and business will be good for getting a job. So just think about that advice. Is that good advice? In your opinion, Abigail says yes. Lynn says no. Alice says yes. Fire tablet says yes. Amelia says not helpful. Marites, OK, so we've got a, a mix of opinions here. I think most of you are saying yes. And I think I think for me, I think I agree. I think his basic points of you got you have to make a decision. You do. OK, focus is good. And these subjects probably would help him be successful. So. I think the advice is good, but what was the problem? What was the problem in that conversation? So the advice was okay. What was not so good? He wasn't right, alas, he wasn't listening, was he? Okay, he wasn't listening at all. He doesn't listen to Josh. What else does he do? What other kind of things does he do? The father was not receptive to his son's ideas. Yeah, that's right, Nina. He cuts in, right, Abigail, he cuts in or he, he, cuts, uh, he cuts Josh off. He interrupts him. He keeps interrupting Frederick. That's right. He makes quick judgments. He does. He's very judgmental, isn't he? As soon as Josh mentions drama, he, he dismisses it. He says, no, that's a terrible idea. Right. So he always interrupts. He never lets his son finish. There's no give and take, Riddell. That's right. Um, he keeps giving his own opinion. So he's a very bad listener, I think we can say. Um, how do you think, question, uh, exercise four, question two, how do you think Josh feels after this conversation? How does Josh, he, he leaves the conversation, how does he feel? He feels sad, frustrated, disappointed. He thinks it's useless talking to my father. He might feel disrespected, Giselle, right? Disappointed, annoyed, says Joralyn. Alone, Matty Ross says alone, unsupported, hopeless, defeated, right? So although the father obviously cares about his son and although he's trying to give him good advice, the way he did it and not listening to his son is going to do more harm than good, right? And this is a lesson that we can learn that when we don't listen to people, when we don't actively listen, we, we can really cause harm to our relationships with people. But the opposite is also true. When we do listen, we can build relationships and we can help people. Um, and this is really uh, the point of studying mediation skills is that they are life skills. Okay, These are skills that are going to help people in their real lives. They're going to help them in you in your job. They're going to help you in your relationships. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, the next section, which is a video. It's called My Voice. And these videos are made by Chia Swan Chong, who uh, delivered our webinar the other day. And Chia is going to tell us about the two different types of listeners. So as you watch, I want you to make a note. What are the two types of listeners? Second question, Chia says that many of us are like Evan. So why? Why does she say that? Remember, Evan is the father. 
And the third question, why does Chia say that listening is important? So we talked about it. Okay, now we're going to see why Chia says it's important. Okay, so three questions for you to answer. Let's go into the activity. Questions are up here. I'm going to play this. I'm going to put the subtitles on. And I'm going to maximize the screen. There are two types of listeners. Some people listen to understand. Some people listen to give answers. In Evan and Josh's conversation, Evan interrupts Josh to give Josh answers he thinks Josh wants. Evan doesn't really understand what Josh wants, but he thinks he knows the answers Josh needs. Many of us are like Evan. When someone is talking, we are already thinking of the answers we want to give them. But a good listener first listens to understand. They try to put their own thoughts away and just listen. They try to stay in the speaker's world. A good listener tries not to interrupt. But when they hear something they don't understand, they ask questions. For example, Evan could ask Josh, what do you mean? Or, are you saying you want to study drama? This also shows Josh that Evan is listening and that Evan wants to understand him. A good listener also shows the speaker that they are not going to interrupt. They can do this by nodding, looking at the speaker when they speak, or saying, yeah, right, or mm-hmm. They can also use language like, I see, I understand, that's interesting, or I'm listening. Listening is a very important part of communication. When we feel someone is listening to us, we think more clearly and we become more open. So, next time you talk to someone, remember to listen. Okay, great. So that was Chia giving us some advice about listening. So let's look at the answers to the question. Number one, Chia told us there were two types of listener. The first type of listener, she tells us someone, someone who listens to, we've got it here. The first one, uh, Giselle was first, listen to understand. And the second was someone who listens to give answers. <clears throat> and I'm sure when you think about that now, you will be able to think of people in your life that you know who do both of these things someone who listens because they want to understand you and someone who listens because they want to tell you what they think. And this is someone like Evan, okay, like the father here. So Chia says that many of us are like Evan. So why? Why does she say that many of us are like Evan? Giselle says, because somehow listeners would like to be the speaker, right, instead of portraying the initial role being the listener, right? So a lot of people like talking, right? A lot of people like like the sound we say in English, don't we? Like the sound of their own voice. They see themselves as having a lot of knowledge they want to share, right? Frederick says, because we think we understand and we think we know the answer, right? And often people, they want to be helpful, right? They think they know the answer. Naoko said the same thing. They want to impress people, right? It might be something to do with that, right? Want to show off their knowledge, show off their expertise. And I think this is true, isn't it? That a lot of people, they only listen to the first bit of the conversation, the first bit of the problem. They immediately think they know the answer and they want to tell, they want to tell you, this is how you solve the problem. This is what you should do. I know you should listen to me. I'm the expert. Um, and a lot of people do that. So my, my wife uh, tells me that a lot of men tend to do this. Um, I don't know if if that's true um, or if you agree with her. Um, 
<laughs> but certainly I know I do know some men who do that as well. Frederick says no. OK, no, not true. <laughs> OK. Question number three. Why does Chia say that listening is important? So. Why does Chia say that listening is important? Because we need advice. OK. Yes. She says, Chia says, when we listen, to people it encourages the speaker it means the p it makes the speaker feel right okay that's good yeah so it builds the relationship it makes it frederick's got it it makes people more open okay it makes people open up it makes people comfortable so when we feel comfortable when we open up this is going to help build our relationship and yes another one jorlin's got it <clears throat> it makes the speaker think clearly so here are the answers i just put them up on the screen so you can compare okay your thoughts with what she has said so number three because when we feel, feel someone is listening we think clearly and we become more open um so what do you think about this video i really like it um and i think she presents this in a way that's very clear and i think it's something that will make people think so um so what do you think? Did, has this made you think about how you are when, when you talk to someone? Is it going to make you think carefully the next time one of your friends tells you a problem that they have? OK, do you think maybe this will pop into your head? <laughs> Frederick says, I can remember a lot of people. Right. So it might remind you of the people that you know. Right. OK, very good. I think it's a very nice lesson that we're learning here it totally helps great i'm glad to hear that all right let's move down here a little bit to the next part exercise six which is the communication skill box and it's about active listening so these communication skill boxes you find in every unit of voices um they're giving tips or advice okay um it's going to help us communicate um so as I said earlier, this kind of language is going to help us with relationships in our jobs. So it's a life skill and it's really linked strongly to social emotional learning. And here are the three tips. Let's have a look. So number one, listen to understand. You can give answers later. OK. Don't speak. Listen to understand. Number two, don't interrupt and show you're not going to interrupt. So we talked about things earlier. You can nod. OK, you can make eye contact. You can use body language so that you're not they know you're not going to interrupt them. Number three, ask questions when you don't understand. So here is my question for you. These three things. Do you find it when you're talking to someone? Do you find it easy to do these things or do you find some of these things difficult to do when you're listening to someone talk? Frederick says challenging. Lanita says it's easy. Yeah, and I think for me, sometimes I find it very challenging because sometimes someone, when, when they have a problem, you know, we know that talking about a problem or something, it for a lot of people, they don't need solutions. They don't need answers. They just want to talk about it. And it's the act of talking that actually makes us feel better. But when someone's doing that, and if they're talking for a long time, I find it very difficult not to say something because at a certain point, I want to tell them what I think. Um, so I think I'm quite good at listening, but I think, I, yeah, sometimes I need to do a bit better. Giselle says it's part of training as a teacher. OK, right. Yeah. OK, we, we try not to interrupt our students. Right. Challenging when students are not aware when to stop. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Sometimes you want to stop someone. Right. <laughs> OK, good. OK, so some very interesting comments coming in here. There are instances that we have to talk. Yes, of course, sometimes we have to interrupt, right? Of course, sometimes we do. All right, let's look next at the useful language. So here, the useful uh, language box. So these, this is introducing functional language. So here we've got listening to understand, asking questions when you don't understand. So we've got things like, what do you mean? Are you saying? Can you explain? Can you tell me more? And we've also got here showing your listening. I see. Right. That's interesting, really. So here we have two functions. But I want to point out that the functions here are quite different to a lot of the functions you find in English textbooks. Uh, we often see functions like 
you know, go, giving directions, okay, functional language, giving directions or, um, you know, uh, buying tickets at the, at the train station, which are very specific. But this is language that we can use everywhere in our lives. It's language which is going to help us prepare for our lives, right? So let's have a look at these two questions. I think this is an interesting question that I'd like to do. It says, what do you say in your first language to show you are listening? Okay, so I'm going to type something in here. Okay, into the chat box. So I used to live in Korea and um, I used to hear people saying this all the time when they're speaking, saying chincha. And in Korean, this word chincha means really. And this is something that Korean people say when they're listening to encourage people, okay, to show that they're listening and to sort of facilitate that conversation, right? So how about in your native language? If you're, if you're not a native English speaker, um, which country are you from? Okay, what language? What's the word you use? And what does it mean? Okay, so in Filipino, you say I-O, talagaba. Okay, I don't know what it means. Really means talaga. Okay, so in Philippines, talaga means really. Okay, great. Here we go. In Finland, we say ihanto tota. Okay, there we go. Great. Okay, it doesn't have to be really. It can be any other word um, that you say. Maybe it's different um, than these words here. In Japanese, we say naruhodo. I see. Right, I see. I understand. Naruhodo. Uh, Pagkatapos, I'm sorry about my pronunciation, means then what happened? What happened next? Right, exactly. Right, so we're showing we want them to continue. What happened next? That's great. We've got an in Persian here. Kolb means Persian. It means well. I apologize for my terrible pronunciation. Uh, Vietnamese, tat luan, really. Okay, this is great. And this is really interesting. And if you're, you've got a multicultural class, multilingual class, your students are going to really enjoy sharing a little bit of their language. Uh, un un in Japanese, I'm listening. I see you say un un. Okay, it means I'm listening. That's great. So I'm learning so much from you here. And in fact, this is really, really interesting. You've got Indonesian, sunga. Okay, great. So many things. We could do this for ages, isn't it? But because of time, we're going to move on. But um, uh, in German, last one, das ist interessant. Okay, there we go. In German, perfect. Okay, and next question for you. If you are a non-native speaker of English, when you, listen, when you are listening in English, do you ever keep quiet when you don't understand? So maybe you're listening to someone in English. Linita says yes. And if you do this, okay, why do you do it? Does it help? Uh, what's the benefit of keeping quiet when we're listening in English? What's the benefit that we find here? So some of you are saying yes. So maybe it gives you more time to think. OK. Oh, OK. So Frederick says maybe because we're afraid we'll be judged. Right. OK. So maybe you don't want to say anything because we're afraid maybe about our English. Yes, because I want to analyze, analyze and wait for the context to sink in. Great. OK, so lots of lots of reasons here. Um, so it can be a benefit, but there's another way of looking at it that if if we're being quiet and not saying anything, if we don't say anything, how might the speaker feel? So if I'm talking to you and you're not saying anything in return, what might I be thinking? So I might be worried about that I think there are maybe three things I might be worried about I might feel maybe you you're not listening right Emiko's got it maybe you're not listening to me I might think maybe you're not interested that's right Frederick and I might or I might think that you don't understand me right so if the listener doesn't say anything we might worry that they're not interested they don't understand or they're just not listening at all right Okay, so there are two ways of thinking about this, aren't there? I remember with a lot of my students uh, when I was teaching, um, I often found when I was having a conversation with them, I'd be asking lots of questions, but still I was the one doing all the talking because I didn't really get anything back. Um, and this kind of one-way conversation is very awkward. Um, and if we experience that, we probably don't want to talk to that person again. So really important that we um, that we do respond when people talk to us. OK, we're going to do one more activity from this lesson, the D lesson. And we're going to 
try to make Evan from earlier the father. We're going to try and make him a better listener. OK, so here is the same conversation they had earlier, but adapted with Evan being a good listener. So let's go through it together. And you're going to tell me which words I can put in here so that uh, from the phrases we looked at earlier. So Josh says, Dad, I need to choose a college and I want to talk to you about it. And Evan says, I'm. Cliddell's got it. He says, I'm listening. Josh says, well, I think I want to try and get into our city college. I really like the drama club there, drama club. And Evan, he asks a one word question. He says, Glidell's got it again. Really? Really? Josh says, yeah, they're very good. They won lots of awards last year. And Evan says, I. <laughs> you got it there, Miyumi's got it. I see. Josh says, the thing is, I love drama, but I don't want to study drama. And Evan says, wise, why is, wise, that. Frederick, well done. Why is that? And Josh says, I don't really want to become a full-time actor. I think I want to study maths and history. And Evan says, okay, that's interesting. That's great. That's okay. That's interesting is the correct answer. So all of these phrases are ones we've learned earlier. So this is the same conversation they had earlier. But here, Evan, you can see Josh is the one doing the talking and Evan is just giving short answers to encourage his son to talk more and explain. So Josh will leave this conversation feeling much better. The other thing that's interesting here is that Evan doesn't give any opinion, right? He's not being judgmental. Someone mentioned that earlier. He's not judging his son. He's not telling him what to do. He's just getting that information and once he's got it once he understands everything then maybe he can think about the advice he wants to get so what do you think do you agree is this a better version of evan is this is this evan doing a better job as a father what do you think <laughs> yes i think so as well i think it's much much better i'm a father myself i should try Try, try and listen to this advice, okay, and try and use this in my life, right? Hopefully you can as well. Okay, um, just want to show you another activity. We can't do it. This is a, a group activity um, to really use all of those skills. And um, what they're doing in this is a group of three, A, B, and C. Student A, <clears throat> uh, this would be the final activity in the lesson. They would think about someone they know who's a good or a bad listener, they make some notes. Student B, they're going to listen to student A, and they're going to use this language that we looked at over here, they're going to use these tips, um, and they're going to be a good listener. And student C, their role in this, they're not going to speak here, they're just going to listen, they're going to watch B, and they're going to give them feedback, peer feedback on how you did. Were you a good listener? And then when they finish that, they swap roles and they do this three times. So each student gets to do each role. So I think that's a really nice way. And this peer feedback is a great way for students to, um, yeah, to think carefully, okay, and to you know to get feedback from someone, not just the teacher. So it's a really nice way of doing it. And down here, last part of the lesson: explore more. What other ways can we show we're listening? And a suggestion here is to look online for an infographic. So we're going to do that. OK, we're going to have a quick look at the infographic online. And um, to do that, I'm just going to stop sharing this for a second. And I'm going to do a new screen share for you. And we're going to go back into my slide deck, right? So. I typed into a search engine active listening infographic, found hundreds of them, picked a couple. So here's an infographic um, based on active listening. I hope you can see this clearly. And this is what we call an acrostic. So we've taken a word, ears, related to listening, and we're making sentences or phrases which are linked to being an active listener. So the first one is eye contact. The second one, A, is uh, acknowledge that you're listening ask ended open questions. 
The third one, R, is reflect your feelings or show your feelings. And S is say it in your own words what you heard the person say. So paraphrase. So as well as being an acrostic, this is also kind of like a mnemonic, isn't it? It's helping us to remember these tips. Here's another one I found. So this one is basically we're taking verbs. We've got pay attention, withhold judgment, reflect, clarify, summarize and share. And then what we've got are six images which link to these ideas. So this is something we could ask our students to do in the classroom. We could actually get them to think of tips just in verb form, and we could get them to design the pictures themselves. Then they could share them with the rest of the class. So we could really get our students to do something a bit creative here. Creativity, I think, is really important in the classroom. So we're going to have a go now at making our own active listening acrostic so we've got l at the top so i've chosen the word listen okay so l at the top so i want you to give me a phrase about active listening that begins with l so what advice could we give someone you want to be an active listener do this okay beginning with l be lively look in the eye frederick great look them in the eye Nice, I like it. What else could we have? A few more ideas. Look in the eye. Listen. Okay, to the point. How to listen actively. Listen. <laughs> listen to be alive. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to show you my idea. Look at me. Okay, look at me. It should be I'm looking at you, right? Okay, if you're the listener, yeah? Okay, so I put here... Let them finish. Okay, right. Don't interrupt, right? Let them finish. How about the next one? I. Okay. I. So think of some advice. How do you be an active listener beginning with I? Yeah, correct. <laughs> yes, I. I contact. Okay. I am listening. Okay, right. Tell them I'm listening. Interest shown. I'm interested. Yes. Interrupt never. <laughs> some creative use of grammar going on here intently lend your ear i love it jesse lee i will not interrupt zubaida that is fantastic i put here interest must be shown which is a little bit of a not a very nice sounding passive form isn't it um i prefer that i will not interrupt great uh let's try s can you give me one with s share something after you hear jesse really good share after you hear stay focused Julie, say nothing and be attentive. Thank you, Julie. Smile, silence. Sharing is caring. Great. Right, these are much better than mine. Mine was uh, smile and make eye contact. I like sharing is caring. How about T? Should we do one more? T. Tell me once more. I am done. <laughs> That's kind of like a warning to stop talking. Trust what he says. Teethy smile. Great. Talk a bit. Right. Talk a bit. Right. Meaning short. OK. Take your time. Take it seriously. So many good ideas. Right. So you can see. And what's great about the acrostic that I just gave you a little bit of inspiration by giving you one letter and you you've come up with so many ideas. And this is really helping our students to be creative. You get um, it's not thinking outside the box. You give your students a box, right? And the box is a little bit of information and then they will come up with their own ideas. It's thinking inside the box. And often that's actually a, an easier way to be creative, right? Okay, I just got two more. E, I've put encourage them to explain. Giselle says enjoy and have fun. Very nice. Everything is good. Okay, let's do N very quickly because we're running out of time. Nod your head. Nod your head for N. Never interrupt, which is what I put, Frederick. We're on a high five, virtual high five. We're on the same, same wavelength there. Never interrupt. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that activity. Okay, so I think, yeah, you know, doing something like this, okay, a nice acrostic, and then we can add pictures in here as well. We can use that as our own infographic. Students can present this to their classmates. Be a really nice activity. Okay. Now we're going to quickly go back to the mediation activity because we don't have a lot of time. Okay, so this is the one I showed you earlier. Can you explain? So we're very quickly going to have a look at this activity. So we have all of the teacher's notes here and the mediation activity I said is a photocopyable activity. It tells us when to use it. It tells us why we're using it. 
and it gives us instruction. So firstly, we're going to be completing phrases from the useful language box on page 31 that we've already seen. And the conversation we're looking at is the same conversation students are going to do on their own later. Um, and it's basically a model, isn't it? So it's scaffolding for the activity. So before they can produce the language, they need to practice doing it. So what this is here, it's two people talking about a job. They're um, discussing a job. And often we don't understand people's job titles. We don't know what their job really means. So this is a conversation about that. So we'll just do a couple of these together. So person A says, what's your wife's job? Person B says she's a landscape designer. And person A doesn't really know what to say. So they say, really? Which means I'm interested. And the next thing, what exactly does she do? Can you explain? Right. So I'm interested. I don't know what that means. Please tell me more. Right. B says, well, she designs gardens for people. And A says, that's interesting. It sounds like hard work because they've heard garden, right? They think it's gardening. B says, hmm, what do you mean? Because now B is confused, right? So they need some clarification. What do you mean? A says, well, gardening is hard work, isn't it? B says, ah, I see. I understand what you mean. Okay, I've got it. Actually, she just designs the gardens. She has a team that does the actual gardening. And person A says, right, I understand. So a really nice model. Okay, a really nice uh, scaffold for what they're going to do later. So next, okay, what the students do is we give them time okay, to prepare. This is for A2 level students. So we give them a little, a little uh, well, like a graphic organizer where they're going to make notes in here because they're going to talk about somebody's job. Okay, and then the final stage here, we're going to ask, they're going to have a conversation with their partner. One of them describes the job and the other one asks questions um, using the language that they've learned. So really nice activity and really nice scaffolding to get them to achieve that. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you, um, I've talked a little bit about CEFR today um, in relation to mediation. So I want to do a little bit of analysis here. Um, so these are the actual CEFR descriptors for mediation from the companion volume. And this section we're looking at is the mediation section. And it, the subheading is leading group work. We're looking at managing interaction and encouraging conceptual talk. So all of this is mediation. If I zoom in on this bit down here, so managing interaction, we can look. So remember, this lesson is A2. We can look at the, you know, the, the descriptors from the real CEFR of what students should be able to do at these levels. Now, if I put the useful language up here, uh, this is from the lesson that we studied. Um, we're going to compare these, okay? So the first one here, the first CFR descriptor is can ask people to elaborate on specific points they made. So which of these questions that we've been learning today, which of these questions is the same as this descriptor, elaborate? Which one of these is talking about elaborate? So read the whole list, and one of them is basically exactly the same as that. So which one do you think it is? Can you tell me more, right? You've got it, okay? Nina and Fire Tablet, Glidel, you've all got it. It's this one, isn't it? Can you tell me more? This means elaborate. Let's look at the next one. Can you ask appropriate questions to check understanding? So which of these questions? I think there are two. Which ones are talking about checking understanding? Right, Negin's got it. Do you mean? Okay, and one more. Are you saying you got it? Okay, are you saying these are checking understanding? Next one can ask questions to invite people to clarify, clarify to make it clearer. So, again, I think there are two. Can you explain? Right, and one more. What do you mean? Right. You're doing great. OK, you're getting these exactly right. And the last one can ask someone why. Obviously, that one is why is that? OK, so we can see that all of these descriptors from B1 we've covered here over here to show you're listening. If I show you these two. So that's interesting. And really. 
Okay, maybe you can tell me if you look down here at A1 and A2. Okay, so we've got A2 can ask what somebody thinks of a certain idea. And A1 can use simple isolated words to show interest in an idea. So these two here, that's interesting. And really, is that A2 or A1? This is A1, isn't it? Okay, so we can see here that we've got all this language here, which is directly linked to the CEFR. Um, so I want to show you that, you know, the language that we're using in voices, it's there, it's there for a reason. It's not just randomly put in, right? Um, and we can see that, you know, we know that the CEFR is, um, is based on language which people really need to communicate in real life. So I want to show you this explicit link between the language we're using in the lesson, the CEFR, and what we need in real life to, to use and to succeed in life. Okay, and this is why this is here. Okay, so let me wrap up, all right, because we are at time, aren't we? So just want to remind you what we've been looking at today, all of the content we've used is from our new program voices. It's for young adults and adults. Okay. It's an integrated four skill program. And one of its big strengths that we saw today is a focus on mediation. If you're also interested in communication, personalization, learning about yourself, learning about other people, learning about the lives of National Geographic explorers, a new way to teach pronunciation. This is a title that I think you'd be interested in. Um, and I'm going to give you an opportunity now to find out more about it. Um, I've launched a poll on your screen now. If you would like us to contact you to give you more information about this program, please type, just hit yes, okay? If you don't, you can put no, and that's fine, okay? No pressure here at all. But if you would like us to give you some more information, please hit yes. Okay, I'm going to leave that on the screen and just give you a bit more information. Um, I know a lot of you want are interested in the certificate, so we are going to send you a certificate. You will get it tomorrow, okay? And the certificate will come tomorrow by the end of the day. And in the email that we send you will be the certificate and a link to the recording. So please be patient and wait until tomorrow. I'm just going to quickly uh, go through these. I tell you what might be easier for me. I'm just going to stop screen sharing for a second. And um, I'm going to put a few things into the chat box for you. Uh, let's go this way, shall we? Let's do that. That's not what I wanted to do. That's okay. We can go here. Right, so a few websites I want to show you. The first one is this one here. Okay, um, this might not be pretty when it comes through. Um, but here is a link to the Voices website. And um, what you can do from here, I just want to show you, um, if you go to program information or if you go to our website and just search for product, so eltngl.com, um, if you go down here to try a unit, um, you can actually download full units of this program from every level um, that you can try in your own classroom. OK, so you can get whatever level you're teaching, you can download that full unit. You can have it as a PDF. You can go in, you can use it and we want you to use it. OK, we want you to want you to try this out and see how you feel about it. OK, and if you like it, OK, maybe you can share it with other people okay tell people that you like the program um another thing i'd like to show you is this page here let me put this into the chat box for you uh so i just put it in here so click on this now okay i just sent you the link nglasia.com webinars um click on the link bookmark it so all of our upcoming webinars we post up here we've got another webinar coming up on february the 24th about reflective reading, okay? If you're interested in reading, sign up. Just come on here, click the button, and you can sign up. And if you check back in a few days, there will be more webinars here for you from our local team, our NGL local team. So please go to this, share it. Again, share it with everyone you know, okay? And let's get people attending more webinars. One more link for you I'm going to put here. Uh, this is our Facebook page. So if you haven't already joined us on Facebook, if you haven't already liked us there, please do. 
um, and you will find out about everything we have going on, okay, on Facebook. Oh, and one more. Here we go. This is fantastic. This is something I think a lot of you are going to find very useful. Um, we've just released this. It's a new professional development title called Breaking Through the Screen. And as it says here, this is a methodology book for people teaching online or in the blended classroom. So whichever level you're teaching, and I know probably all of you are teaching online, this book is going to give you loads of tips, loads of ideas, loads of activities that you can use to help you be a better online teacher. It's one of the first books of its type that's been released. Um, if you go to the digital sampler, <clears throat> you can go through, there's all the information you need. Uh, there are videos on here, professional development videos, lots of great information. It gives you an overview of all the different chapters in there. Um, and I think you're going to find this really, really useful. OK. Yeah, the table of contents, you can just go through. <clears throat> um, you can uh, it goes through chapter by chapter, right? Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. So you're going to be able to see all of that stuff. OK. Right. So those are some things that I wanted to share with you. All right. So don't forget, OK, you'll get an email by the end of tomorrow with your certificate and with your the link to today's uh recording okay uh please also as i said go and visit our page okay eltngl.com let's put that in there okay have a look at have a look at the voices page okay have a little poke around on there um, you're going to find all, as well as those downloads, you're going to find all sorts, you've got, we've got the interactive sampler as well. Okay. Um, you've got loads of good stuff on here that you can use um, that's going to help you in your classes. Okay. So I'm going to say thank you very much for attending today. Um, you've been really, really great, um, really participating. Okay, I've really enjoyed reading all of your responses there and you really seem to be getting involved with the lesson. Someone asked about feedback. Um, when you exit the webinar, it will take you to a very short survey. Okay, I think it's like three questions. Okay, so if you could fill that in for me, that would be great. Okay, so take care everyone. Make sure you've bookmarked our webinar page. I'll be back next month at some point with another webinar and i'm looking forward to seeing you again so stay safe out there take care and have a great evening <laughs>